Drew Holiday was just traded to the Celtics. The NBA news has been crazy the past couple of days because now Drew Holiday is traded to the Celtics where he joins Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I'm going to call myself out because when the Blazers initially traded for Drew Holiday, immediately I'm like, they're going to flip him. And while I was correct on that, like before the report even came out that they were going to flip him, that was my first thought. However, I'm not going to lie, I said I thought the Celtics didn't have much of a chance to get him. And to me, it wasn't because the Celtics didn't have picks, because that is one of the things that the Celtics did have. They had picks. But to me, I didn't think that Malcolm Brogdon, obviously Rob Williams was included in the deal, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I didn't think, you know, a deal surrounding Malcolm Brogdon was going to get it done, you know, I guess unless they threw a bunch of picks at the Blazers. Like to me, I felt like for two first round picks, there were other teams that were trying to get Drew Holiday who had better packages. Now, I don't know what was offered from anybody else, but I'm just saying based on what I know, like from the players who are on the team standpoint, I thought other teams potentially had better offers. But I will say though, when the report came out that the Celtics were actually contenders, not today, obviously, because the trade happened, but the day before when they said the Celtics were actually engaging in trade talks for them, I just had this funny feeling. I'm like, actually, now I think he's going to the Celtics. It just sounded like it was going to happen. I don't know how to explain it. It was just a gut instinct. Like I said, at first, I didn't think they had a chance. But I'm saying once I heard that they were actually able to have talks with the Blazers, I kind of felt like it was a little bit over at that point. But I didn't want to obviously say anything because that was just an assumption. There are a few ways to look at this trade. There are a whole bunch of ways. So let's talk about a couple of them right now. Let's talk about from the Blazers standpoint first, because I feel like that is easier and shorter to explain. For the Blazers, they got the two first round picks, which obviously they wanted. Okay, here's the other thing. This is the other reason I just remembered. This is the other reason as to why I thought before the report came out that the Celtics didn't have much of a chance. Because although the Celtics had picks and I knew that, I felt like the Celtics picks were not going to be that valuable. Now, yes, there are good players everywhere in the draft. We know this. You can find a lot of talented players in the second round, the end of the first round. So I'm not disrespecting any late first round picks. I'm just saying how it goes in the NBA, how it is, you know, factual, is that you want to try to get the number one pick, a top lottery pick. Like, it's looked at as more valuable. That doesn't necessarily mean the player will be better than somebody else, but it gives you a higher chance because usually someone who is highly drafted or drafted higher in the draft is supposed to be a better player. You know what I'm saying? So what was weird to me about this trade is that they gave the Warriors first round pick from this upcoming season. And I, along with plenty of other people, expect the Warriors to be good. So yes, They'll probably, you know, the pick will be late first round, which again, you can find valuable players, but that's not a valuable pick still. So that didn't make sense to me. And then they gave their 2029 first round pick. A long winded answer, I apologize, to get to my point right now is that I felt like even the Celtics, if they were giving two of their own first round picks, even if it was five years down the line, that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, assuming they're still on the team, will still be in their primes because they're 25 years old. So five years from now, they'll be 30, you know, approximately. So that's still prime. So I felt like the Celtics picks were not going to be very valuable, you know, valuable, <laughs> because even if they gave a pick five years from now, if they are still on the team, the team should still be like a playoff team with those two. Now that is making an assumption, of course, like, they could be really bad, you know, five years from now, even with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Like, I don't know. And I'm not saying they will be, but I'm just saying, like, it's just an assumption. But that's why I felt like, you know, back to my original thought where I'm like, yeah, the Celtics have picks, but how valuable will their picks really be? So those are the two picks they gave to the Blazers. Then they gave Malcolm Brogdon and Rob Williams. Now, this is very interesting. Malcolm Brogdon, you know, we heard, you know, the rumblings that obviously he was not happy about the potential Clippers trade rumors. Malcolm Brogdon is coming off an injury, like he has an elbow injury right now. So that's why it's a little weird to me that the Blazers traded for him. But what I'm thinking, you know, I guess in this way is that they're taking Malcolm Brogdon and they're going to flip him probably to the Clippers who wanted Malcolm Brogdon. And because the Blazers have already gotten a haul basically for Damian Lillard, because you have to remember that the Drew Holiday thing happened because of Damian Lillard. So right now they have five first round picks from the Damian Lillard trade. So now, you know, they're just looking for any additional compensation. So for Malcolm Brogdon, they're not going to be looking for a lot. Maybe they can get one first round pick from the Clippers. Giving them a total of six first round picks unprotected. 
that's really good for Damian Lillard. So that's kind of the mindset I think they're going into it with. I also do think that, uh, you know, he strays to the Celtics. That's kind of the Bucks' rival, you know, so uh, Damian Lillard's on the Bucks. you know. They said they are keeping Rob Williams, so there is not much to say about that. Do I think it was the best trade the Blazers could have gotten back? In my opinion, no, because I still do think other teams who are trying to get him could potentially have offered more. Again, I don't know. But, you know, it is what it is. They accepted what they wanted. Now on to Drew Holiday on the Celtics. This is crazy. I said it when I talked about Drew Holiday before. Drew Holiday is one of the best two-way players in the NBA. Awesome, awesome defender. Really good person. Great fit on basically any team in the league. Like, he is just a really good player to have on your team. The Celtics also really needed a point guard. We've known this for months, especially after trading Marcus Smart. They really needed a point guard, but even before that, I felt like they really could have benefited from a pure point guard, which is why when Chris Paul was available, I felt like he would have been a really good fit on the Celtics. Health concerns aside, like just from fit-wise, I felt like it was a good fit. So Drew Holiday is an amazing pickup for the Celtics from that standpoint. I think he fits in perfectly. I think he's a great leader. I think he can help Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, even though they have been to the playoffs a bunch of times. I just feel like he brings a lot of veteran leadership and stability. When things are getting rattled and a little crazy, they can give it to Drew Holiday to create a shot. Like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown don't have to be initiating the offense in those clutch moments. And I feel like that is very important. And we know Drew Holiday is going to defend some of the best players. Like he's going to be fine there. So from a fit standpoint, this was really awesome for the Celtics. They really needed him. On the other side though, by trading away Rob Williams, they actually become really thin at the center position, which is kind of crazy because they weren't thin before, but they I guess they kind of were, but it just didn't seem like it. I guess because Rob is just so good when he plays that he just makes up for wherever they lack, you know, at the center position. You can't rely on Al Horford at, you know, 38, 39, you know, however old he is at this point. You can't rely on him to be a center for 40 minutes a night. And honestly, he's really much better, in my opinion, as the power forward, at this point in his career at least. Like, when he plays the four alongside Rob, that's a tough combination. But now you're basically saying he needs to play the five, unless you're putting Porzingis at the five, but we know he doesn't really like to play the five. So I don't know how that's going to work in terms of that. Unless you're bringing Al Horford off the bench, but then like, okay, so Porzingis is starting at the five, Tatum at the four, uh, Jalen Brown at the three, and then you're starting Derek White at the two with um with Drew, Drew Holiday starting at the one or do you want uh Derek White to come off the bench like it's a little complicated now the thing with Rob is that he hasn't been healthy in recent seasons like he has his moments of course but he keeps getting injured and so like that's really hurting the team when he's not there and that he can't stay healthy because when he is on that court he is super good but at the same time I felt like they really needed a point guard they really needed Drew Holiday like very badly in my opinion so like in a way, their need for Drew Holiday and a point guard outweighs, you know, them trading Rob. But at the same time, it doesn't. Like, Rob was really important to that team. So I'm struggling because I do think Drew Holiday was a great pickup. I think he's a great fit. It's just that you gave up Rob. And, like, it's kind of similar to the Bucks thing where I said, like, picking up Damian Lillard is a great pickup. He is a good fit. He is a good asset on the team. He's a good leader and all that stuff. I'm like, but you gave up Drew Holiday. It's kind of a similar situation, even though, like, obviously, Damian Lillard and Rob Williams are on different levels in terms of players. I think they are really going to miss Rob's interior defense, Rob's ability to block anybody's shot. Like, on the perimeter, too, Rob is athletic. Rob brings energy. Like, he's just a really good player. But in order to win, they would need Rob to be healthy the entire time. And I guess they kind of weighed it as, like, well, we know that Rob there's a good chance or there's a chance that he might get hurt again. We just have to take a chance and see that Drew will be healthy. So I do think it made the Celtics better from a standpoint of like in clutch moments. I think this will really help their organization in terms of on the court. Like not the Celtics organization, but like their organization on the court by not getting frazzled in tough moments. It's really going to come down to how much are they going to miss Rob and are they going to get, you know, crushed inside the paint? That's the question. But I love the Drew Holiday pickup. 